So we're <clears throat> finally getting ready to do our cover. So this is the paper I used for the cover. And basically the way you're going to determine um, how high this is going to be, because I use this, this section down here below the, this white part, this is about two inches. So this has to be around two inches and then you're going to cut all the way up to, to get your right height. So my height, you measure yours on your album, is eight and three quarters. And then the width is six and seven eighths. So that was is going to go here. I'm not going to be adhering it down. We need to put a ribbon. I wrote it down. I'll probably forget, but we need to put a ribbon down. Then you're going to get the shaker card that we made. And reminder with the shaker card, I hand cut each of these strips and built them up, you know, like seven to eight layers thick of the 100 pound cardstock um, and put them around a base, which is around this uh, card, this four by six cut apart card. I built it on a base around this card and then I used my die cut to make the frame. Technically, if you have a die cut, just cut seven to 10 100 pound cardstock pieces, put them on top of each other and then put this one on top of those. I did a lot of work to get all these in there and I could have just used my die. I know I could have, but I wanted to try that, but anyway. And then I put a little bit of that gold paint down here. So you're gonna have this, and I was going to mount it on this craft card stock that I hand painted. Well, just did a quick um, edging with that metallic paint. This measures, mine measures um, six and a half plus one tick by four and a half plus one tick. But that depends on the size of your sugar cart. Mine is four and three eighths by six and a quarter, six and one eight, two eighths, six and a quarter plus one tick. So all I did was make a little edging around it. So I want a little bit of that gold metallic to be showing. So we're gonna fix this shaker card on this little gold painted um, piece of cardstock. And like I said, you can use any color of cardstock, any scrap that you have, you're just gonna be whipping on that gold metallic paint with a foam brush. Okay, that's gonna go there. And then I made this imagination. I cut out this imagination from um, a cut apart. It was like this with the, you'll see it with the unicorn. So I cut that out, matted it on that, this is gold vellum. Technically, I guess you could just mat it on this and you don't need the gold vellum, you could just it straight to that it looks it looks almost the same so I could have done that too I just had the gold vellum and wanted to try it out and then I matted everything on um, craft card stock and ink the edges I think I may ink this a little bit more but that's going to go down down in here in this part down here and then I cut out this I had this from another Stamperia Collection Dream. You could use this one from um, the Snow, the Sleeping Beauty Collection Dreaming, and same thing, put it on some gold card stock, and that would be pretty to surround it with the gold, or put it on gold vellum and have that there. But I, I did this one, I, I wanted it to, I like this one, but that one would work too. 
And this is just going to go somewhere like this. Probably under there like that. And that was all I was going to do for this page. I may add some photo um, corners in through down in here, but I'm not sure. But So I'm going to put this aside. I might build everything on this page and put it aside so it's ready to go. Need to attach my ribbon. So again, this is eight and seven eighths, so it's basically nine, four and a half would be the about the midline. Not quite four and a half. That's the midline, and I usually like to put it right the edge right above that. So I'm going to adhere the ribbon down here. I'll add some score tape here and then put this down here and leave about 12 inches, way too much, but we can always cut it. So now we're going to work on the spine. So I put this paper down um, just so I have it here as reference. I haven't adhered it all the way down. Got my score tape all the way around. I only put score tape at this edge. Secured my ribbon down. Now, for we need a transition piece between the front and the back cover. So I have this piece. This is from the Wonderland collection. Um, but I wanted, to, I had this long enough, but I wanted to have a little um, transition with this piece going through here. So I just cut out this from this sheet from the Sleeping, Be Sleeping Beauty, the Sleeping Beauty, Sleeping Beauty. Yes. And cut that out from here. You can cut it out from multiple places. There's another one from the Stamperia from Sleeping Beauty. They're all the same and they're the white right width for this. So what I did is I just taped this piece to this piece to this piece. This is the same height as this. So I got this long strip, cut it, got this lined up and cut it right where this black line is. I cut it there. Put this piece in. Put this piece in. Cut it and then added this one. So I just need to trim the top part of it. But that's going to be our spine. So I'm going to get this cut up here. It's going to be the same height as my paper, which for me is basically eight and three quarters, eight and three quarters. Eight and three quarters, yeah. So that is what I'm going to do. This, the width of my piece here is put it up so you can see. One and one and two eighths, one and three eighths. So it's going to fit like, oops. Like this. Like I said, I have not adhered this down yet. So that's why there's a big gap there. So I'm going to measure this and get this down and then I'll work on the back cover.
So I have this piece down and now we're going to work on the back panel. So I've added the ribbon, which is at the same location as the front ribbon. Just wanted to show you the name that I got this at Joann's and it is five eighths of an inch and it's called polyester golden. That's what I used because what I had in my stash and I thought it, it went well with the collection. Secured that down, I put it over the score tape and then add some more score tape just to secure it down. So now we're going to work on this back piece. Once again, we're going to ink this edge, this one up, and it's going to continue with this line here that we have. And we're going to get this paper from Sleeping Beauty Collection, and we're going to measure it from this end to this end. And then cut it down here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing like we did here. We're going to cut out a piece from the bottom to add our little strip. So I'm going to get this measured. Let's see, what did I have? I'm just going to see, what did I get on this side? This was six and seven eighths. So this is probably going to be six and seven eighths also. If I cut my chipboard correctly. From end to end. right there. So put my little tick mark up here. And that measures six and seven eighths. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this and ink ink it and I'll be right back. So this sheet is cut to the, the right width. Now, same thing, we're going to cut this bottom piece. We're going to start down here and we're going to cut it at where this strip is beginning. So we're gonna cut it right there. I'm gonna put my little tick mark, take it to the trimmer. And that way we can pull this paper up and add our little um, strip here. That will stretch out our paper and continue this line all the way to the back. So I have my pieces cut and inked. So what I'm going to do is butt this bottom piece to this strip, turn it over, and then I'm going to use some scotch tape and put these together, make sure they're lined up at this one end. And then I'm going to trim this part off and re-ink the edge on this. And then we'll butt it up to this paper. And then we'll just have to trim the top a bit and re-ink that top. So uh, that's what I am going to do. So I have the paper cut. I scotch taped it and then I added my score tape over those seams. I'm going to add my score tape, put this around, and then put this on. Finally, get this on. Hopefully it's all nice and straight. Oh, I still need to trim a little bit off the top, I see. So I'm gonna bring it over to this one just to see. So I'll make my little tick mark on how much I need to cut off on the top. But then it's going to be ready to lay down finally. 
and I'll be right back. So I think we're ready to put our elements on our front cover. So we have our shaker card and then we're going to place it on this piece, which measures basically four and a half plus one tick mark. So four and a half plus one tick mark, one sixteenth and six and a half plus one sixteenth. Just um, applied that gold metallic tape, um, gold metallic paint, and we're going to center that on our shaker card on this. So that's going to go, the way I had it was the edge of the shaker card is aligned with this, this line down here. So it's like that. Then we have this piece, this imagination. Remember we cut off this imagination from this, this um, cut apart in the collection. I mounted it on gold vellum. Remember I just put gold vellum um, on top of some score tape and then I put that on score tape on top of some craft card stock and the gold vellum won't wrinkle or you won't see any anything if you mount it on um, tape, this score tape. So it's like that. So this piece measures four and one eighth by seven eighths of an inch wide. And that's going to be centered down here on this bottom piece down here. So it's centered this bottom piece right here and centered in the middle. And then we have our dream also mounted on um, the vellum. And like if you don't have gold vellum, you can use the gold metallic. Um, no, I haven't glued it down yet. You, you can use the gold metallic paint. I mounted this on the dream on um, cardstock also, craft cardstock. That's going to go in here, and I'm going to slip it in between this piece and this piece. That dream like that. And then I just cut this butterfly from somewhere in the collection. There's lots of them. And probably going to put it up like this. So that's the way it's going to look. And then I, I'm i not crazy about this black border here. I originally wanted to use craft cardstock. I didn't want to use white or cream. I could have used cream, but I, I want it craft, but I ran out. So what I'm thinking, I have some of this crinkled um, seam binding ribbon and it's what is it's Christmas green because I got lots of Christmas and it's old fashioned ribbon.com. I have it in this color, which I thought would go real well. I also have it in gold, but that was too much gold. So I think I might put this on. It's only, I think it's like three quarters of an inch wide. And that would kind of soften that black edge over here. And I think it still looks good with, with the paper. But I'm not quite sure yet. So first I'm going to kind of get all this um, put together and then I'll be back. So I have the sugar card adhered down. Um, I did not adhere this part yet because we're going to be sticking in our dream little sentiment there. So next I'm going to be, get my score tape, I'm going to be 
of fixing this down here. Remember, I'm going to line this line up with this line, and we're talking about what is that? A quarter of an inch away from almost a quarter, yeah, about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. So I'm going to affix that down next. So there's the finished cover, which looks really pretty. Remember, you can always use the Dreaming from the, the Sleeping Beauty collection and put that in, in there instead of the one I put. This is from another Stamperia collection that had fairies, I think. And that's it. I may do some more embellishments, but not a lot. I was still, I don't like this much black showing here, but I needed it for the spine. So I'm still thinking about putting this crinkled seam binding on the edge here, which I think would give it another texture. And now I'm kind of committed because I was trying out the gold seam binding here and I tore the paper. So got to do something and there's all this black on this side too. So I think that would look good on the back side here. Give it some more texture. You can also obviously use lace to cover up this or you can just leave it the way it was before. I ripped it. So I think that's it for the front spine and back cover.